Instructions. The listening test is 45 minutes. There are tasks in the two parts of the listening test. Each task consists of a recorded video or audio scenario. The number of questions for each task also varies depending on the length of the video or audio. There are multiple choice questions for some listening tasks and shift to shift report for others. After you have completed all the tasks in the listening section, you may have some time remaining. You can use this time to navigate back to previous tasks to check your answers. Now get ready for the test and follow the instructions. Part 1. Tasks 1 to 4 Instructions. You will listen to a short audio or video recorded conversation and answer the questions. While listening, select the correct answer from the options provided for each question. Task 1. Booking a follow-up appointment. You will hear a telephone dialogue between medical office assistant and the patient's mother. You will get 45 seconds to read the questions. Listen to the recording and select your answers. Good morning, this is Armstrong from Mount Sinai Hospital. How can I assist you today? Hi, yes, this is Mrs. Johnson. My son, Michael, had an appointment with Dr. Smith yesterday and I was supposed to receive some lab results today. I was wondering if they're ready yet. Good morning, Mrs. Johnson. Let me check on that for you. Can you please verify Michael's date of birth and the name of the physician? Sure. Michael was born on May 12, 2008, and his doctor is Dr. Smith. Thank you, Mrs. Johnson. Let me pull up Michael's file. It seems like the lab results are still pending. Sometimes they take a bit, a bit longer to process, but I can send a message to the lab to expedite them. Would you like me to do that for you? Yes, please. It's just that I'm a bit worried, you know. Michael hasn't been feeling well lately, and I'm hoping the results can give us some answers. I completely understand, Mrs. Johnson. I'll make sure to mark your request as urgent. Is there a phone number where I can reach you once the results are in? Yes, of course. It's 555-1234. Thank you so much for your help. You're welcome, Mrs. Johnson. We'll do our best to get those results to you as soon as possible. In the meantime, if Michael's condition worsens, or if you have any other concerns, please don't hesitate to call us. Thank you, I appreciate that. Oh, and while I have you on the line, I wanted to ask about scheduling Michael's follow-up appointment with Dr. Smith. His condition hasn't improved much, and I think we might need to discuss further treatment options. Of course, Miss Johnson. Let me take a look at Dr. Smith's schedule. How about we aim for next Thursday afternoon? Does that work for you? Yes, Thursday sounds good. Afternoon works too. Thank you for arranging that. You're welcome, Mrs. Johnson. I've scheduled Michael's appointment for Thursday, April 25th at 2 and, 2 and p.m. Is there anything else I can assist you with today? No, that should be all for now. Thank you for your help and for being so understanding. It's our pleasure, Mrs. Johnson. We're here to support you and Michael every step of the way. Take care and we'll be in touch as soon as we have those lab results. Thank you again. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mrs. Johnson. Have a great day. You will now have 45 seconds to review your answers.
Task 2. Patient Injury You will hear a dialogue between a nurse and the patient's relative on telephone. You will get 45 seconds to read the questions. Listen to the recording and select your answers. Good morning. This is Nurse Johnson speaking from St. Mary's Hospital. How may I assist you? Oh, thank goodness I reached someone. This is Sarah, John's sister. He's my brother and he's had an accident at home. I'm so worried. I understand, Sarah. Take a deep breath. Can you tell me what happened? Is John conscious? Yes, he's conscious, but he's in a lot of pain. He fell down the stairs and hurt his leg badly. There's some swelling and bruising. I'm sorry to hear that. Have you been able to provide any first aid? Yes, I've applied an ice pack to reduce the swelling, but he's still in a lot of pain. Okay, Sarah. It's important we get him the help he needs. Can you tell me if there's any obvious deformity or bleeding? No, thankfully no bleeding, but his leg looks pretty swollen, and he's unable to put any weight on it. All right. It sounds like he might have sustained a significant injury. I'm going to ask you a few questions to assess the situation better, okay? Of course, please go ahead. Has he lost consciousness at any point since the injury? No, he's been conscious the whole time. Is he breathing normally? Yes, his breathing seems fine. Has he been vomiting or complaining of any other symptoms besides the pain? No, he hasn't vomited, but he's been feeling nauseous. Okay, thank you for the information, Sarah. Based on what you've told me, it's possible that John has a fracture or a severe sprain. It's important that he gets medical attention right away. Yes, I was thinking the same. I'm just not sure how to transport him to the hospital. He can't put any weight on his leg. Is there anyone else at home who can help you move him? Alternatively, you might need to call for an ambulance to safely transport him. Yes, I think I'll have to call for an ambulance. I'm worried about moving him and causing more damage. That's understandable, Sarah. I'll stay on the line with you while you make the call. Do you have the number for emergency services? Yes, I do. I'll call them right away. Great. Once the ambulance is on its way, make sure John is in a comfortable position and try to keep him calm. If you need any further assistance, don't hesitate to call us back. Thank you so much, Nurse Johnson. I really appreciate your help and guidance during this stressful time. You're welcome, Sarah. It's all part of my job to ensure patients receive the care they need. Please keep me updated on John's condition, and if there's anything else I can do to help, just let me know. I will. Thank you again. You will now have 45 seconds to review your answers. Task 3. Patient Status Report You will hear a dialogue between a nurse and a patient's brother. You will get 45 seconds to read the questions.
listen to the recording and select your answers. Good afternoon, this is Nurse James speaking from St. Mary's Hospital. How can I assist you today? Hi, Nurse James. This is Mark, Noah's brother. I'm calling to check on my sister's condition. How is she doing? Hello, Mark. Thank you for reaching out. Let me check Noah's file for you. Could you please confirm her full name and date of birth for verification? Sure, her full name is Noah Johnson, and her date of birth is May 12, 1985. Thank you, Mark. Just a moment while I pull up her records. All right, Noah Johnson, let me see. Ah, here we are. Noah is currently stable. She had surgery earlier today, and she's now in recovery. The procedure went well, and the doctors are pleased with her progress so far. That's a relief to hear. Can you tell me more about the surgery? What exactly did she have done? Of course. Noah underwent a laparoscopic cholecystectomy, which is a minimally invasive procedure to remove her gallbladder. She had been experiencing some issues with gallstones, so the surgery was necessary to alleviate her symptoms. Oh, I see. How is she feeling now? Is she awake yet? She's still in the process of waking up from the anesthesia, but everything is proceeding as expected. She may feel a bit groggy or disoriented when she first wakes up, but that's completely normal. Okay, thank you for the update. Do you know when she'll be able to have visitors? Visiting hours start at 3.00 p.m., so you're welcome to come by then if you'd like. However, I would recommend waiting until later in the evening to give Noah some time to rest and recover. Understood. I'll plan to come by later this evening then. Is there anything specific I should bring for her? Just her personal belongings, like her phone, charger, and any comfort items she might like, such as a blanket or pillow. We'll take care of the rest here. Got it. And how long do you anticipate she'll need to stay in the hospital? Typically, patients stay for one or two nights after this type of surgery for observation and pain management. However, it ultimately depends on Noah's individual recovery process and how well she responds to treatment. All right, I understand. Thank you so much for all the information, Nurse Johnson. I really appreciate your help. You're welcome, Mark. If you have any other questions or concerns, don't hesitate to give us a call. We're here to support both Noah and her family throughout her recovery. I will. Thanks again. Goodbye for now. Goodbye, Mark. Take care, and we'll see you later. You will now have 45 seconds to review your answers. Task 4. Call for advice. You will hear a dialogue between a nurse and physician. You will get 45 seconds to read the questions. Listen to the recording and select your answers. Good morning, Dr. Smith. This is Nurse Johnson calling from Ward B. I wanted to discuss Mrs. Thompson's condition with you. Good morning, Nurse Johnson. Of course, please go ahead. What's the latest update on Mrs. Thompson? Well, Doctor, Mrs. Thompson's fever has spiked again, despite the antibiotics we started her on yesterday. She's also complaining of increased pain in her abdomen. That's concerning. 
Have you conducted any further assessments? Yes, doctor. I performed a physical examination, and her abdomen is distended and tender to palpation. Her white blood cell count has also risen since yesterday. All right. Thank you for the update. Let's order a repeat CBC and abdominal ultrasound. Meanwhile, I'll come by to assess her myself. Understood, doctor. Should I continue with the current antibiotic regimen? Yes, for now. But if we don't see any improvement in her condition, or if the ultrasound reveals anything significant, we might need to switch to a broader spectrum antibiotic. Keep a close eye on her vitals and notify me immediately if there's any change. Will do, doctor. I'll inform the lab for the repeat tests and arrange for the ultrasound as soon as possible. Great. Thank you, Nurse Johnson. And also, make sure to document all of these updates in Mrs. Thompson's chart. Of course, doctor. Is there anything else you'd like me to do in the meantime? No, that should be all for now. I'll head over to Ward B as soon as I can to assess Mrs. Thompson myself and discuss further steps with you. All right, doctor. Thank you for your prompt response. I'll be waiting for you here. Thank you, Nurse Johnson. I appreciate your diligence in Mrs. Thompson's care. Keep up the good work. Thank you, doctor. I'll see you when you arrive. You will now have 45 seconds to review your answers. Part 2. Tasks 5 Instructions. Listen to the report and dialogue and circle the correct answers as you listen. Task 5A, Shift to Shift Report. As you listen to the Shift to Shift Report, circle the best choice for each room and patient. You will get 45 seconds to read the questions on the chart before the audio begins. Listen to the recording and select your answers. This is the evening shift report for Monday, May 10th. Room number 471, Emily Thompson. Emily, a 45-year-old woman, is recovering from a major surgery to remove a benign tumor in her abdomen. She's experiencing post-operative pain and requires regular monitoring for signs of infection. Emily is generally cooperative and appreciative of the care she receives. She's calm, but occasionally gets anxious about her recovery progress. Her husband visits daily and is supportive, but he's often stressed about managing household responsibilities and their children's needs. Room number 473. John Smith. John, a 68-year-old man, is hospitalized due to pneumonia and complications from COPD. He requires oxygen therapy and frequent respiratory treatments. John is a bit grumpy and irritable due to discomfort from his condition. He's also frustrated by his limitations and dependency on medical support. His daughter visits regularly and is attentive to his needs, but they often clash due to John's stubbornness and reluctance to follow medical advice. Room number 475. Maria Rodriguez. Maria, a 60-year-old woman, suffered a mild stroke and is undergoing rehabilitation to regain mobility and speech. Maria is determined and optimistic about her recovery. 
but she sometimes feels discouraged by setbacks in her progress. Her son is actively involved in her care, attending therapy sessions, and providing emotional support. However, he tends to be overprotective, which sometimes frustrates Maria. Room number 477, David Johnson. David, a 30-year-old man, was admitted for severe dehydration and electrolyte imbalance due to a gastrointestinal infection. David is generally easygoing and cooperative with treatment. However, he struggles with anxiety, especially when experiencing physical discomfort. His parents are supportive, but tend to hover around him, which exacerbates his anxiety. They're anxious about his health and constantly seek reassurance from the medical staff. Room number 479, Sarah Lee. Sarah, a 25-year-old woman, is hospitalized for complications related to type 1 diabetes, including diabetic ketoacidosis. Sarah is proactive about managing her condition and follows medical instructions diligently. She sometimes feels overwhelmed and scared by the seriousness of her illness. Her siblings visit occasionally but are unsure how to support her effectively. They often rely on medical staff for guidance and reassurance. Room number 481, Michael Brown. Michael, a 55-year-old man, suffered a heart attack and underwent emergency coronary artery bypass surgery. Michael is initially fearful and anxious about his prognosis, but gradually becomes more optimistic as he starts to recover. His wife is deeply involved in his care, advocating for his needs and providing emotional support. However, she tends to be overprotective, which sometimes frustrates Michael's desire for independence. You will now have 45 seconds to review your answers. Task 5B, Shift to Shift Report. Now, listen to the Shift to Shift Report again, and circle the best choice for each room and patient. This time, you will need to listen for different details. Listen to the recording and select your answers. This is the evening shift report for Monday, May 10th. Room number 471, Emily Thompson. Emily, a 45-year-old woman, is recovering from a major surgery to remove a benign tumor in her abdomen. She's experiencing post-operative pain and requires regular monitoring for signs of infection. Emily is generally cooperative and appreciative of the care she receives. She's calm, but occasionally gets anxious about her recovery progress. Her husband visits daily and is supportive, but he's often stressed about managing household responsibilities and their children's needs. Room number 473. John Smith. John, a 68-year-old man, is hospitalized due to pneumonia and complications from COPD. He requires oxygen therapy and frequent respiratory treatments. John is a bit grumpy and irritable due to discomfort from his condition. He's also frustrated by his limitations and dependency on medical support. 
His daughter visits regularly and is attentive to his needs, but they often clash due to John's stubbornness and reluctance to follow medical advice. Room number 475. Maria Rodriguez. Maria, a 60-year-old woman, suffered a mild stroke and is undergoing rehabilitation to regain mobility and speech. Maria is determined and optimistic about her recovery, but she sometimes feels discouraged by setbacks in her progress. Her son is actively involved in her care, attending therapy sessions, and providing emotional support. However, he tends to be overprotective, which sometimes frustrates Maria. Room number 477, David Johnson. David, a 30-year-old man, was admitted for severe dehydration and electrolyte imbalance due to a gastrointestinal infection. David is generally easygoing and cooperative with treatment. However, he struggles with anxiety, especially when experiencing physical discomfort. His parents are supportive but tend to hover around him, which exacerbates his anxiety. They're anxious about his health and constantly seek reassurance from the medical staff. Room number 479, Sarah Lee. Sarah, a 25-year-old woman, is hospitalized for complications related to type 1 diabetes, including diabetic ketoacidosis. Sarah is proactive about managing her condition and follows medical instructions diligently. She sometimes feels overwhelmed and scared by the seriousness of her illness. Her siblings visit occasionally but are unsure how to support her effectively. They often rely on medical staff for guidance and resurance. Room number 481, Michael Brown. Michael, a 55-year-old man, suffered a heart attack and underwent emergency coronary artery bypass surgery. Michael is initially fearful and anxious about his prognosis, but gradually becomes more optimistic as he starts to recover. His wife is deeply involved in his care, advocating for his needs and providing emotional support. However, she tends to be overprotective, which sometimes frustrates Michael's desire for independence. You will now have 45 seconds to review your answers. Task 6. Symptom Chart As you listen to the dialogue audio, check the box that describes the symptom. Listen to the recording and select your answers. Good morning. How are you feeling today? Hi, I'm feeling a bit under the weather, to be honest. I see. Can you tell me what symptoms you've been experiencing recently? Sure. Well, I've had this persistent headache for the past few days. It's not unbearable, but it's definitely there. And I've been feeling quite fatigued, even after a full night's sleep. Also, my throat feels scratchy, like I might be coming down with something. OK, let's start with the headache. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate the severity of your headache? 
I'd say it's about a five or six. It's not excruciating, but it's definitely noticeable. And have you been experiencing any nausea or sensitivity to light or sound along with the headache? No, thankfully not. It's just the headache itself. All right. Now, about the fatigue. Have you been feeling more tired than usual, despite getting enough rest? Yes, exactly. I've been getting my usual amount of sleep, but I still wake up feeling exhausted. Have you noticed any changes in your appetite or weight recently? No, not really. My appetite seems normal, although I haven't been feeling up to cooking much. Understandable. Now let's talk about the scratchy throat. Have you been experiencing any coughing or difficulty swallowing? A little bit of both, actually. I've been coughing occasionally, and it feels like there's a lump in my throat when I swallow. Have you been running a fever at all? I'm not sure. I haven't checked my temperature, but I've been feeling a bit warm on and off. All right, I'll make a note of that. Now, have you noticed any other symptoms, such as body aches, chills, or congestion? Now that you mention it, I've been feeling a bit achy, especially in my muscles. And I've had a runny nose on and off, but nothing too severe. Thank you for letting me know. Based on what you've told me, it sounds like you may be coming down with a viral infection, possibly the flu, flu or a cold. I'll go ahead and document your symptoms so that we can keep track of any changes in your condition. In the meantime, I'll also take your temperature and check a few other vital signs, just to be thorough. OK, sounds good. Thank you for your help. Of course, it's my pleasure. I'll be right back with the thermometer. You will now have 45 seconds to review your answers.